So let's start with what is an operator? First of all, an operator is a Kubernetes application. It's an application running inside of Kubernetes. Now, this application is different from most others. This is an application that manages other applications. And in fact, this application is customized for the application that it manages. So for each application that you want to manage, you would write an operator that is customized to manage it. The thing that the operator manages is called the operand. So that's the application being managed. And that operand is typically a backend service. And operators work the way Kubernetes does. In fact, an operator extends Kubernetes. It effectively teaches Kubernetes how to manage your custom application. So why are operators helpful? In a nutshell, an operator makes a service self-managing. It, embed, it embeds knowledge about the service and the service's lifecycle. So an operator understands how to manage the service. It understands how to install the service, upgrade it, keep it running, track its metrics, all kinds of good stuff. The operator knows how to do that with and for the service. This is really important in hybrid cloud. Because in hybrid cloud, the customer downloads the service and installs it in their own Kubernetes cluster. And then because it's running in their cluster, that means that they're responsible for managing it. And here's the thing, is that the customer doesn't really wanna to have to manage your service. The customer may not have the, the staff to do the management or the staff that they have available may not really have the skills to know how to manage your service or maybe they're just not that interested in it. Um, maybe they don't feel like they should have to manage your, your service. So instead, if your service can manage itself, the more self-managing your service is, the much more appealing it's gonna to be to your customers. They will like that you made it self-managing. So who can benefit from operators? Any service in a service catalog can potentially benefit from having an operator that makes it more self-managing because the more self-managing the service is, the easier it is to use. So here's a couple of examples. Operator Hub is a service catalog. The things that are in Operator Hub, those are services that have operators that make them self-managing. Operator Hub is basically the Docker Hub for operators. Another example of a service catalog is the Red Hat is Red Hat Marketplace, which is essentially the app store for Red Hat OpenShift. So when OpenShift customers want to get services to add to their cluster, they go look in Red Hat Marketplace, much like the app store. And again, to put services in Operator Hub or Red Hat Marketplace or another service catalogs like this, they have to have operators. For other service catalogs, maybe the operators are optional, maybe they're hidden, but in general, they're a good idea. So why are operators necessary? Most workloads that are deployed to, to Kubernetes and OpenShift are stateless workloads. And Kubernetes is already optimized to manage stateless workloads, and it can do that real well, and it can do that pretty much using its default functionality for the most part. The problem is what we call stateful workloads. Um, those are much harder to manage. Each one has to be managed differently. And Kubernetes out of the box doesn't know how to manage those. So as an example of a stateful workload, let's consider the MongoDB um, database application. Like anything that, that's running in Kubernetes or OpenShift, it has a it runs in pods and there's a bunch of pod replicas that allow it to scale horizontally across a bunch of machines or a bunch of, um, of cluster nodes. However, in a stateless workload, all of those pod replicas are basically the same. Whereas in a stateful workload, even though they all look the same, they're actually uniquely different. And when one gets shut down and has to be restarted, there's, there's tricks to how you restart it to, to make sure that you get the same one again. And then in MongoDB, it's even a little bit worse 
because not all pods are the same. One of the pods is a primary, and then all of the other pods are secondaries that are federated or associated with that primary. And the way MongoDB works is the very first pod that starts has to be the primary. After that, every other pod has to be a secondary. If the primary fails, then one of the secondaries has to be promoted to primary, and then all the other secondaries have to be refederated into that new primary. So all of this managing the way the pods run in, in a MongoDB database instance is fairly complicated. It's a lot more complicated than it is with a stateless application. And this is why you need a, 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 an operator is to be able to manage this, to be able to make it work. I'm pausing for a second. All right. I'm ignoring y'all slacks. Okay. Picking up where I was. So operators help solve this problem of managing stateful workloads because an operator is the custom code that knows how to manage the, the specific stateful app. It knows how the stateful app works and it's implemented accordingly. The way the operator works is based on how the stateful app works. It makes the, 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 the service more self-managing. Again, the thing that the operators manage is called the operand. And in this case, the operand is a MongoDB database. You can have multiple MongoDB database instances, multiple databases that are all managed by a single MongoDB operator, especially if they're in the same cluster. That's fairly easy to do. So one operator can manage multiple operands. Each operand has variables, which are the operands configuration. And that's what makes one operand different from another. And operators automate the work for a site reliability engineer. Basically what, what SREs tend to call toil. Toil is this work that has to be done all the time that's really not very interesting most of the time. And the key to it is that it can be automated. Because it can be automated, operators can automate that you can implement an operator to automate that. This way, the SRE spends a lot less time doing toil and can spend a lot more time doing things that are higher value. Here's basically the structure of an operator. The heart of an operator is the controller and the heart of the controller is the reconcile method. So most of the code that you will write for a, an operator will be in the reconcile method. Now, along with the, the controller, which is a, a piece of code written in some computer language, usually Go, so it's deployed in an image, there, there's also a Kubernetes resource called a custom resource definition. And a custom resource definition defines a new type in Kubernetes, a new kind. So here the kind is memcached, so it's used for managing memcached. And what it specifies is the schema of the variables that need to be defined, that, that, that need to be known about an instance. So for example, for memcached, we need to know the size, so which is an integer. And then along with the custom resource definition, you're going to end up creating one or more custom resources, CRs. Each CR is an instance of its corresponding CRD. And because the CRD defines a schema, then the CR is gonna specify values for that schema. So this says there needs to be a size and that the CRD says that there's a size and it's an integer. Well, then the CRD needs to specify a size and it can be an integer like three. Now back inside the, the computer code for the, for the operator, besides the controller, there's also an API. The API is in whatever structure the language uses, but it's a reflection of the same schema as the CRD. So whatever fields are in the CRD, those fields are in the API. And the API is used to read the CR and get its values 
and store those in memory in the program that's running here. And that makes those values available to the controller. And then the controller is going to use that to, to perform reconciliation. These are all deployed in, because it's a program that's being deployed in Kubernetes or OpenShift, that means it's made into a container image. And then that container image is what's deployed. Now also, it's going to use RBAC, specifically a service account, because what the controller is going to do in the reconcile method is it's going to run kube API commands. And in order to be allowed to run those commands, it's going to need a service account that allows it to do so. So this is just standard RBAC, standard server service account stuff, nothing fancy here. It's just a matter of something, it's a feature that already exists in Kubernetes that the operator is going to take advantage of. Just like CRD and CR, those are features in uh, Kubernetes that already existed before operators came along, but that operators take advantage of. This is an example of, of how an operator gets run. Is that in the um, in the management plane of Kubernetes, when you install it straight out of the box, there is a kube controller manager. And then there's a bunch of controllers that all run in the management plane. And what the controller manager does is it runs a control loop in an infinite loop over and over, where in that loop, what it does is it iterates through each of the controllers in the management plane and tells each controller to reconcile itself. So it tells the first one, reconcile. When it's done, it tells the second one, reconcile. And then the loops goes through all the controllers telling them to reconcile. When you deploy a operator into that cluster, then your operator's controller gets added to the control loop. So now what happens is when you have a couple of operators deployed in the cluster, then the controller manager first tells each of the management planes controllers to reconcile themselves. And then it tells each of the operators controllers to reconcile themselves. And it goes in a loop. So this is an example of how operators extend Kubernetes, is that Kubernetes already comes with, with a bunch of controllers built in. When you deploy more operators, those are deploying more controllers that are, gonna, that are gonna be added to the main control loop within Kubernetes. This last slide shows a couple of things. One thing that it shows is that there's three main languages to use to implement operators, Helm, Ansible, and go. Something like 70% of the operators in Operator Hub are implemented in Go. So that's probably what you'll use most of the time. Now, frankly, Helm is easier to get started, especially if you haven't if you don't already know the, the Go programming language. The problem with Helm is you can get started easily, but in the end, you can only do level one and level two operators. So if you want to do all five levels, you're going to have to switch to Ansible or Go. Now, what are those five levels? These are levels of maturity or capability that, that some operators are more capable than others. So, a, and the, the levels are cumulative. So if a, if a operator is a level three operator, then that means it can also do levels two and one. So the base, most basic level is that the operator is able to install the operand. The second most basic level, level two, is that it can upgrade the operand to a new version. Level three is it can manage the full life cycle of the operand, so it can do uh, backups and, and recover from failures. Level four is that it can gather metrics about the, operator, the operand and, and see if it's running right and make sure it's running right. And then five is autopilot. So vertical or for horizontal scaling and detecting abnormalities and scheduling and things like that. So when you write an operator, first you'll write it as level one and then you'll add the other levels as you go. Uh, 